Continuing coverage tonight of efforts to tackle eating disorders among youth in Vermont. Tomorrow, the Senate is poised to pass H-481, a bill aimed at preventing youth suicides. Part of it would increase education at schools about eating disorders. Some studies have found higher levels of suicidal thoughts and actions among people with eating disorders. Families tell me this bill is a start. She was diagnosed June of 2020. Tanya Walker's daughter, Sydney, was 15 at the time. And that would be her trying to warm up because her body was so cold. An Olympic weightlifter, confident, driven, and then the pandemic hit. And she lost control. I can control what I eat and I can control how I exercise. And we noticed a pattern of less food, excessive, excessive exercise. Her older brother eventually pointed out to their mom that Sydney didn't look well. I said, do you need help? And she says yes. Did it take a lot of courage for her to admit she needed help? Oh, absolutely. This is a girl that does not want to fail at anything she does in life. Walker says eating disorders thrive in those kinds of personalities. Sydney was in recovery, but relapsed in spring 2021, ending up in the hospital. She welcomed a feeding tube, um, but then decided, no, nope, you're not putting anything through it. And so when she was there, the hospital said, there's nothing we can do. And I remember sitting in that room crying. So they sent Sydney by ambulance five hours away to a Providence, Rhode Island Children's Hospital instead. The doctors there said her heartbeat was so low, she was at risk of a heart attack. Her kidneys were starting to fail and she didn't care. Deep down, I knew she wanted to live, but she was so far buried with this monster that she couldn't get herself back. After more than three months there, Sydney came home. Her mom says she's still working through the trauma left from her treatment. She has a long road still to recovery. And part of that is also because we had to go out of state. Ever since the report came out to lawmakers earlier this year about what the state could do to help families whose kids are struggling with eating disorders, families like hers have been waiting for lawmakers here to take some kind of action. However, so far, eating disorder treatment has taken a back burner to larger priorities like paid family leave and child care. However, language just added to House 481 would require that schools get education around identifying, using language about, and preventing eating disorders in youth. The question is, will they do more than that? So this is all a beginning. Senate Health and Welfare Committee Chair Senator Ginny Lyons says lawmakers are still waiting on another report about how to increase eating disorder awareness among health care providers like pediatricians. She calls this session's action a start. Is there more to be done with this? Oh, absolutely. You know, putting, the, putting schools in and is, is the place where kids are frequently identified with eating disorders. And it's an opportunity for school counselors and others to work w with kids. It's also an opportunity within the after school program where we know there's a significant amount of counseling and mental health um, work going on. So this, this fits very nicely with that. Do you think that goes far enough? Walker says the seeds of an eating disorder were planted young in Sydney, even as early as daycare, by innocent behaviors of others that caused Sydney to compare her weight to other kids. She welcomes more training for medical providers. We don't have enough psychiatrists. We don't have enough therapists. We don't have enough doctors skilled and ready to take on eating disorders. She says Sydney is healthier now using painting and horse therapy to keep her eating disorder at bay. She says Sydney was willing to let her mom share her story to push lawmakers to act. She said, if this helps somebody, then you need to share it. As for that bill, once it clears the Senate, then it will go back to the House before it heads to the governor. Some lawmakers told me, though, they feel some of the report's recommendations can be addressed without legislative action. But families like the Walkers are worried that without a mandate from lawmakers, there won't be meaningful action to address the gaps in care that remain.